Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a board that I believe is the same model as another one that I have coming early next week. Uh, the one that I have coming is called the GMK67 from Zuoyi, uh, Z-U-O-Y-I. Um, and it's sold on the Zuoya store z-u-o-y-a <laughs> so i don't know if they're related or not but uh, i've purchased numerous of my ciy uh kits from there and commissions that i've done for friends and family so but this one i bought from amazon because as many of you may know i don't necessarily have a good opinion of epo maker based on their history uh, not only on their port qaqc but their customer service as well as their non-existent warranty. But anyway, so I want to confirm because that board's coming up, but I wanted to go ahead, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd do a review of this one real quick and perhaps I'll just melt it in with the other one or do two separate ones. We'll figure it out as we go. I haven't opened this one yet, but this one is one that's been recently released by Epo Maker called the EK68, which is a 65% with a knob. Uh, now it is, the one that I'm getting, I know, is VIA compatible. I don't know if this one is VIA or not. Now, this one does come preloaded with Gatoron Yellow Pro 2s. Or Gatoron Yellow Pro. Yeah, Gatoron. Yellow. Uh, yeah, yeah, Yellow Pro 2, I believe. I, I don't know if they have come up, I mean, with a different version of the Gatoron Pro, but I wouldn't be surprised. So I'm guessing that's what that means. Anyway, so I have not opened her up yet. It is feels pretty um, substantial in the box. Go ahead and put the keyboard aside. Let's see what we've got in the box. We've got some extra keys to change some of the colors. And it does look like it's a decent... Oh, these are double shot. Cat, key cap. So I'm going to guess that they're PBT. Yeah, most likely PBT, but I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. One of the standard key cap pullers. A braided USB-C to USB-A. A uh, basic one, but it's... I, I, I just... I'm not fond of the ones that have really big covers on the C side of the connector. Because they're not going to work with other boards. But... This is, now, this is something that does bother me, and then I can, that is outside of the box. It says designed and manufactured by Epo Maker. Well, this keyboard right now, I have found what I believe to be at least two variants, one of them being the one that I'm on the way. It's called the GMK67, but uh, several variants that were released uh, for specific markets only. So, I've got to believe that because Epo Maker rebrands everything, they don't they don't manufacture anything. Uh, they may contract someone to manufacture something, but they don't. From what I know, they don't th n themselves manufacture, and this is not something that is that is regularly seen in an Epo Maker. Are extra switches. So, like I said, I'll have the. Uh, I'll have the GMK this week, so I'll be able to do an apples to apples comparison. So here we are with the EK68. Oh, this is the Epo Maker version. I also, I tend to believe that this is a plastic version. I can't say if it's ABS or PC, I would guess ABS, but the, it definitely has like a metallic finish. Uh, it looks and feels very similar to the Sea-Doo V65, which is another one that Epo Maker, I mean, they're selling it as the Epo Maker Sea-Doo V65, but it is also available as the Final Key, which is a company that uh, used to be Fancy Tech, um, which I did not have necessarily good interactions, but the layout, the size, and the placement of the rocker, not or the encoder knob, 
as well as the, these two indicator lights that we have here, which is for the battery charging and LED on and off, or maybe it's the cap lock indicator. I don't know, we've got two lights. They're also on the GMK67. Now the c 65 just has the blocker, but it is a metal case. So I did not take a look when I opened that one up to see if maybe there were some LEDs hiding under there. Anyway, this is a three mode. It does have a pocket for the doggle, which is always in a nice thing. We've got 2.4 in the Bluetooth switch. By default, it's USB, as it should be. I don't get this on and off, because the keyboard should just plug it in. So the standard or the basic default state should be um, USB. All right, so let's go ahead and plug her in and see what kind of RGB we've got on this kit. All right, we have some RGB for sure, but it's definitely not very bright. Obviously, we don't have shine through keycap, so that's probably a good part of it. Let's go ahead and dim the lights a bit. So, you guys can see the RGB just a little bit more. It acts, from what I recall, it acts just like the CDU. V65. So anyway, this one comes, like I said, with the Gateron yellow the Pro 2s, I believe they're called. Now we can definitely see that the, the RGBs are actually pretty bright. Um, the keycaps are just blocking it. I would guess they are pros. It'd be hard for me to differentiate between these and the regular pros, but there is no spring ping to speak of. And it's also south facing. Now the version I'm getting is a VIA compatible keyboard. So I have curiosity here. I'm gonna see. Just so we can take a look, I'm gonna go ahead and Bring the lights back up They're really close. They've got what looks like a pour on IPX e pad sheet. Just like the V B65 steel plate. Hmm. Now, the one that I'm getting comes with a PC plate, and the CDU also comes with a PC plate, so that could be what's adding a little bit to the ping. So, yeah, as I said before. These are actually some pretty decent keycaps. They're a double shot. If I had to guess, I'd say they're PBT because of the feel. I take out my calib calipers and go ahead and zero them out. Oh, 1.5 millimeter, which is a decent uh, body width for keycaps. So it's gonna deliver a nice sound. See what the stabilizers look like. We do have plate mounted stabilizers here. And there actually does not appear to be any wiggle whatsoever. And they are greased. I wouldn't call it lightly, but they're not overly greased. Let's take a look at the space bar. definitely have some padding between the uh, plate and the PCB and I do believe there should be some padding between uh, the bottom of the case and the battery that's down at the bottom I will wait to take a, take one of these apart or both of them apart until I have them both in hand a little bit of wiggle there but not much and we do have just a I mean it's a little bit more than I'd put but I've seen much much worse on pre-built keyboards. They definitely, they definitely could use a tuning. I'll say that though. Yeah, this is a metal knob and, all right. 
Oh yeah, that's exactly the um, the size and the way those two little uh, studs sticking out like that. Uh, that's the C D V sixty five knob. So, and it, it is. It's 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 tiny. It's about the size. All right, slightly bigger than the size of a dime as far as the circumference goes. So, it just. I mean, I'm not complaining. I like. I, I do like my knobs, and I do like it over to the furthest. Um, though, uh, well, that's neither here nor there. But yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the definite impression that this is this is basically the um, plastic version now. Oh, of the V65. Uh, Want to check one more thing here, though, if this is recognized by Via. Nope. It is not. So the one I've got coming has a polycarbonate plate, and it is Maya. This one, who knows what I'm going to have to to load. But the profile, everything else, appears to be exactly the same as the um, the GMK67, and it does appear to be a plastic version, the CDV65. We do have two pairs of legs. That means it's going to give us a uh, selection of three different typing angles. And the keycap set isn't awful. It's not necessarily the best. But yellow on gray. It seems almost I don't know, a little green, I could say. And the fact that they, they don't follow, you know, escape is all caps, but the rest of them are just regular. The W seems to be in bold for the win. Um, but that's the whole thing. I mean, they included a couple of extra keys, but they're keys that already exist. So if you want to do remapping of the navigation cluster, the three keys they do give you. It seems that you know you're gonna have to use a different keycap set, but I gotta say now that <laughs> that I've seen the escape key, with all caps and the rest aren't, and then that, I mean, you can see how the win is bold, just the W and the win is bold, but the rest is normal. Like <sighs> there, there is no QA QC process if these things are making it through because. I mean, I know when I built software, they went through it through, with a fine tooth comb, and it wasn't only one person, it was a group of people. So they, you know, it wasn't just left to one person to make the mistake. If, if it passed everybody, then, you know, it was a bug that was un unexpected. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Epo Maker EK68. Currently, MSRPs for $89. It is a three mode, 65% with a knob. It is a plastic case. It is gasket mounting, mounted and has dampening both between the PCB and the plate as well as in the case. It does come with a steel plate. It's hot swap compatible with three and five pin switches. It has a dedicated battery indicator LED and south facing LEDs. It comes standard with this option. There's three different choices for switches, but this one comes with Gaineron Yellow Pro 2s that appear to be slightly pre lubed from the factory, as well as a set of OEM double shot PBT caps. It uses plate mount stabilizers, has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, and weighs in at approximately 806 grams. The chin sits at 21 millimeters above the surface with the back at 33.5 millimeters and a typing degree angle of eight degrees. When using the middle set of feet, you have 38.5 millimeters of back height with a typing angle of 11 degrees. Using the last and final set of feet, you have a 44.5 millimeter height at the back of the keyboard with a 15 degree typing angle. So today we took a look at the EpoMaker EK68. Um, it is manufactured by somebody else. I believe it's a company called Apex. It even says it on the back of the keyboard. 
uh, why Epo Maker says manufactured by whatever. Anyway, uh, this keyboard though has very has a long list of similarities with the SeaDoo V65, and as far as plastic and aluminum keyboards can have, um, it definitely does not sound as good. Uh, I think part of it is the aluminum plate. Um, Part of it is the case and you know, cheaper materials that are used. Actually, this the sound of this keyboard stock reminds me of a stock uh, Gas 67. It's, it's extremely similar. I have Akko Starfish, so they're linears um, at the same weight of a Gator on yellow. So, I mean, and this this is actually a PC plate and can be modded to sound. A lot better not and I'm sure that this could be as well but straight out of the box I don't feel that it has uh, obviously I mean we're talking aluminum versus plastic but this being only $30 less than the sea do v65 you know, does make you want to question my problem is with the CDV 65 or the final key v65 is aftermarket sales I've had bad bad experiences with fancy tech who later they changed their name to something else and now they changed their name to final key i don't know if they're the manufacturers of it but they they're not a company that i, I would trust with a five dollar bill to hang on to for five minutes so but that's just that's neither here nor there i uh personally i hope that the the uh, gmk 67 that i have coming um with the with the uh, it is a bare bone so I get to choose the switches, but it does have a polycarbonate plate. So I'm just going to load those up and see if, because these are OEM profiles on here. I do believe I have a couple of 1.5 millimeter OEM caps, or maybe even just switch these caps and put it on there just to be as close as possible. Heck, I might just switch the switches and caps so I can compare literally head to head uh, what the difference is between this keyboard and the GMK67. I already sent the CDU back, but um, you can search through my videos and you can find the sound test there if you want to kind of compare those two. So anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test of this keyboard. I hope everyone is having, having a wonderful uh, December. Uh, soon the year will be over and we'll start a brand new year. Uh, it's kind of crazy how quick this year went, but hoping for everyone that it's going to be a better year. Until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.